But it doesn't mean that the warnings were wrong. It doesn't mean that we won't have a recession. It just means that it has taken longer to unfold than a lot of people expected. But now those same signs are actually getting worse. The state of the United States economy had generated a lot of concern for everyone, especially economic experts who foresaw a bigger impact than what non-experts knew. Among these experts is Jim Rickards, who warns the populace to brace up and prepare for a global financial crisis. Notable economist, investment banker, and best-selling author Jim Rickards was interviewed by Daniela Cambo when he made shocking predictions about this year's wildness for the global economy. Let's hear what Daniela said here. Your view for 2024, should I say, is quite grim. You say it's going to be worse than 2023 and that a recession is still likely and maybe it's already begun. Starting from the state of the economy, Rickards' claim wasn't only about the United States, but the whole world economically. Are we in for a recession? He forecasted a global recession affecting the U.S. and China, which cannot emerge unscathed from their significant headwinds. According to the World Bank, the global economy will record its worst half-decade of growth in 30 years. The United Nations posted on X formerly known as Twitter that global growth will slow for the third year in 2024 dipping to 2.4% from 2.6% in 2023. After this, growth is expected to rise marginally to 2.7% in 2025. And despite the global economy proving resilient in the face of recessionary risks in 2023, increased geopolitical tensions will present fresh near-term challenges, leaving most economies set to grow more slowly in 2024 and 2025 than in the previous decade. According to Rickards, China, the US, and Japan will all fall into recession in the coming months, resulting in a global recession scenario in 2024. According to The Economist, Japan is on the edge and might have been in recession. The same goes for the UK as well. Let's hear them out. Germany's in recession. They just are. That data is clear and it's getting worse. Uh, Japan is kind of right on the edge. Uh, might be in recession. UK, same thing, right on the edge. However, the US and China's recessions are probably a stretch as China is trying hard to prop up its economy. This may be more challenging than it seems because, despite the stimulus reopening policies, the country will likely fail in its most recent relaunch attempt due to debts weighing heavily on its economy. The United States is included as well as the nation is knee-deep in debt due to the federal government spending more than it takes in. With nowhere to get money, the government has to borrow money to cover that annual deficit, and each year's deficit adds to the growing national debt. Since 2001, the U.S. government has spent more money than it takes in, and as of December 2023, the country's debt is around $33.1 trillion. This means every single American, including you, owes $101,630. Isn't that a massive amount? This debt, coupled with several economic difficulties, and most especially the COVID-19 pandemic, brought about inflation that saw everything skyrocketing and the likelihood of the country crashing was very high. Fortunately, the latest Consumer Price Index report wasn't flashy. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the inflation gauge, which measures price changes for a basket of goods and services, ticked slightly to 3.1% for the 12 months from its peak of 9.1%. This report largely came in exactly as economists had expected and served up another piece of evidence that high inflation is slowly, but surely, waning and the country isn't crashing as Rickards predicted. Also, unemployment is reduced. In a significant boost to the job market, the U.S. economy added 353,000 jobs in January, nearly twice economists' forecast of 185,000. Moreover, total job additions of the previous two months were revised upwardly by 126,000. Several news outlets have come up with several figures, and I'll show the figure mentioned by Rickards now. But if you look behind the numbers, I mean, there are two surveys. One of them showed 200,000. 
Major sectors that added jobs included professional and business services, healthcare, retail trade, government, social assistance, and manufacturing. Due to this, the unemployment rate has remained low and stable, fluctuating between 3.4% and 3.9%. The labor force participation rate was also unchanged at 62.5%. The labor force participation rate changed slightly from 62.8% in November to 62.2% in December. When compared to Europe, the U.S. economy is showing remarkable strength. Countries in Europe are struggling with tighter monetary policy and the shock of the energy price surge in recent years. Despite this, Americans aren't at the level they want, and they continue to urge the Fed to do what is necessary. But can they at this moment? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Fed and Politics The bigger picture of another incident that'll have a huge impact on the country's economy is politics and the upcoming election. Fed Chair Jerome Powell will face a political firestorm if they reduce the rate. This is because Donald Trump and his supporters will scream that the coming rate cuts are part of the conspiracy to re-elect Joe Biden. The Fed will, of course, say they are political, but is that true? Let's have Rickard's opinion of them. Well, the Fed, of course, always says we're not political. We do right. what we're supposed to do. We follow the models. We're not political. That's completely untrue. They're, they're highly political. They watch the headlines very closely. So if they want to be on the safer side, should they keep the rate high for long? The Fed believes they're in that position where they shouldn't be raising rates. So the question is, when will they cut rates? The probability of a rematch between President Biden and former President Trump is high. Former President Donald Trump trounced his Republican opponents in the first two 2024 Republican nominating contests setting a course for a potential general election rematch with likely Democratic nominee President Joe Biden. Focus on taxes. Lower taxes could boost equity markets if Trump wins and succeeds in making his 2017 cuts permanent, though fears of a revived trade battle with China might counterbalance some of those gains. Analysts at TD Securities wrote in a recent report. Trump has proposed to increase tariffs by 10% across the board to bolster U.S. manufacturing. The firm continued that tax cuts could also stir fears of growing budget deficits and weigh on Treasury prices by pushing up term premiums, a measure of the compensation investors demand for holding long-term bonds. Meanwhile, a Biden win might mean higher corporate taxes and a possible stock negative. The degree to which either candidate can push through his respective policies depends on which party gains control of the House and Senate. Shares of solar stocks and other renewable energy companies, many of which have been pressured by higher interest rates, stand to benefit from Biden's re-election due to his expected support of clean energy initiatives, said King Lip, chief strategist at Baker Avenue Wealth Management. King Lip also commented on this, saying the clean energy industry can do quite well under Biden's second administration due to the rates coming down and continued high government spending on these projects. We aren't ready for the rematch. Aside from all these, most Americans weren't impressed by Biden's administration of the economy, and most didn't want his second term. Trump leads President Biden by 6% in a Reuters poll after a previous poll that saw the duo tied. This showed Americans weren't happy about the rematch. The nationwide poll of 1,250 U.S. adults showed Trump leading Biden 40% to 34%, with the rest unsure or planning to vote for someone else or no one. As Trump beat his sole primary challenger, Nikki Haley, in New Hampshire on Tuesday, 67% of respondents said they were tired of seeing the same candidates in presidential elections and wanted someone new. Still, 18% said they would not vote if Biden and Trump were their choice. One of the reasons for this is age. 70% of respondents, including about half of Democrats, agreed with a statement that Biden should not seek re-election. 56% of people responding to the poll said Trump should not run including about a third of Republicans. Biden has been weighed down by the widespread view that at 81, 
already the oldest person ever to be U.S. president. He is too old for the job. The reason for that is shown here. To mark Joe Biden's 81st birthday, we have compiled his most senile moments into his nearly three years of presidency. Holding the trophy as the United States' oldest ever elected president, Joe Biden has had a fair share of public blunders that have drawn worldwide attention. Three quarters of poll respondents agreed with a statement that Biden was too old to work in government. At the same time, half said the same about Trump, who at 77 would also be among the oldest U.S. leaders ever if returned to the White House. Just over half of Democrats saw Biden as too old, while a third of Republicans viewed Trump that way. Trump's primary opponent, Haley, also said the citizens don't want a rematch between the two. Another factor that could weigh on Trump is his charges. 55% of Republicans in the poll said he should be convicted and sentenced to prison if he broke the law. Trump, currently facing four criminal prosecutions, has argued in court that he should be immune to prosecution for actions taken while he was president. Here's what Rickard says about that. But he'll get convicted of something. He might actually be in jail on election day. To be sure, most Republicans do not think he is guilty. Only one in five Republican respondents said it was believable that Trump solicited election fraud, one of the key charges against him. And four out of five said his political opponents were abusing the legal system to derail his presidential bid. Dollar Saga Another reason this current administration shouldn't return to the White House is the dollar's depreciation. Trump even wrote on his social network that the dollar may not be the number one world currency soon as China is trying to displace the currency. The BRICS nations developed a de-dollarization strategy as if that wasn't enough. The group, which consists of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, wants to create a common currency for trade and investment between each other to reduce their vulnerability to dollar exchange rate fluctuations, as mentioned in this clip. We're going to have a common currency. We'll all be able to trade it among ourselves. And by the way, Rickards knew the BRICS are powerful. BRICS leaders have said they want to use their national currencies more instead of the dollar, which strengthened sharply last year after the Federal Reserve raised interest rates and Russia invaded Ukraine, making dollar debt and many imports more expensive. Russia's assets, worth $300 billion, were also frozen by the U.S. because they have access to it. Here is what Rickard said about it. Seizing is different. That's when you steal them. That's when you take them and say, hey, Russia, they're not just frozen. They're ours. We're, we're taking them. They're not yours anymore. And selling them at the market and using the $300 billion of proceeds to finance the war in Ukraine. If the dollar gets eliminated, it will remove the vulnerability but will cause the currency to drop. Apart from Jim Rickards, other economists like Noriel Rubini, who predicted the financial crisis of 2008, and Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, expressed their view that the era of the dollar-dominated global order and economic globalization is fast disappearing as the world's major powers are forming their own economic, financial, and military blocks. Can the economy achieve soft landing? Despite all these, factors like a reduction in the inflation rate are boosting hopes that the U.S. economy will achieve a soft landing next year rather than a widely feared recession. A soft landing would occur if the economy slowed enough to bring inflation down to the Federal Reserve's 2% target without tumbling into a deep recession. It's a tricky task. The Fed has sharply raised its key interest rate to moderate borrowing spending and tame inflation. The risk is that the Fed would miscalculate and keep its benchmark rate, which affects many consumer and business loans, too high for too long, causing a recession. Everyone was expecting a soft landing, not the crash records forecast. According to the author, the U.S. might already be in recession, given reports regarding inverted yield curves, rising commercial real estate defaults, declining industrial production, declining job creation, and falling bank loans. The banking crisis. Rickards believes the banking crisis developed last year will continue in 2024 with not too big to fail regional banks starring on the stage. 
History shows that major financial crises unfold in stages and have a quiet period between the initial and critical stages. According to Rickards, this mid-sized banking meltdown could snowball into a global crisis directly affecting capital markets. Throughout March last year, the banking system was shaken by several high-profile bank failures, a volatile stock market, and global banking concerns over the past few weeks. The catalyst was the abrupt closure of Silicon Valley Bank, the first FDIC-insured bank to fail in two years. SVB was previously one of the largest banks serving the tech startup industry and the 16th largest bank in the U.S. overall. After the bank was forced to sell bonds at a loss, its stock price plummeted and depositors panicked, leading to a classic bank run. This was the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. The third largest came just days later when Signature Bank ceased operations. The FDIC took control of the bank's branches and deposits before First Citizens acquired SVB. And as this played out, New York Community Bancorp acquired a significant portion of Signature Bank's assets. The failure of these banks caused widespread panic, especially at regional banks where institutional customers had large amounts of uninsured deposits. Banking stocks were volatile, and there were concerns that other banks, such as First Republic Bank, might be unable to endure the turmoil. Ultimately, it did not. Around May 2023, First Republic Bank became the third bank to fail federal agencies, including the U.S. The Treasury, the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC worked throughout March to contain the damage and sell off the troubled bank's assets. Eventually, fears subsided as deposit outflows stabilized, seemingly ending the latest banking crisis. Meanwhile, investors relaxing because they believe the banking crisis is over are making a huge mistake. JP Morgan Chase bought most of the troubled bank's assets. Rickards claims the banking crisis will come back to haunt us. Let's listen to his reasons. Tell us why you believe it will come back to haunt us in 2024. Well, first of all, that's what history shows. And uh, you know, none of these things are completely deterministic, but financial history is a, can be a pretty good guide. Gold or Bitcoin. He added that stocks will perform poorly, losing up to 50% if global geopolitical conflicts escalate. In contrast, gold and silver should perform well. With the currency on a plunge, investors seek gold to protect their net worth against inflation and other financial risks. Gold has long been considered a safe investment due to its stability and reliability. As a rare and valuable resource, gold retains its value over time, even amid economic uncertainty and market volatility. In 2024, this perception of gold as a safe investment option remains strong. While there are other reasons to consider investing in gold, such as diversification and portfolio balance, its ability to act as a hedge against inflation remains one of its most attractive features. Silver, like gold, has a long history as a store of value and a medium of exchange. However, in comparison to gold, silver is more abundant on Earth, which means it doesn't have as much upside potential as an investment. Still, it remains an attractive investment option in 2024, mainly as a hedge against inflation and other economic uncertainties. While silver may not have the same level of prestige as gold, it can still play an essential role in a well-rounded investment strategy, unlike Bitcoin, which, to Jim Rickards, looks like a form of entertainment rather than a means of payment or investment. According to The Economist, Bitcoin is a casino chip that can be used to gamble. Let's listen to how he explained it. I think of Bitcoin as a casino chip. They continue that Bitcoin has no value except in the crypto world just like a casino chip, has no value outside the casino. You can't go to the restaurant and tender your casino chip as a payment. You'll have to convert it to dollars like you do for Bitcoin. So is that worthy of investment? Here is another good point Rickard made. The point being, you can't freeze gold. I've always liked that about gold. It's not digital, it's not electronic, you can't freeze it. And lastly, gold doesn't need to be converted to dollars. Who doesn't recognize gold? 
As Rickard said, you just have to put on your crash helmets for a wild ride in the coming year, and gold is one of those helmets. Or what do you think about his dire predictions? Tell me in the comments section below. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more financial updates. See you in the next one.